All right, imagine that you are taking a vacation up in the hills somewhere and then suddenly you reach a location where there is absolutely no network and then on top of that you run into an emergency. It could be a medical emergency. You're in trouble because you can't connect with anyone. Now, what if I tell you that today we have a technology that can get you out of this kind of a precarious situation and help you connect with anyone that you want on your smartphone without using any other third-party technology. Now, the kind of technology that I'm talking about here is called Direct to Cell. Now, this is a new tech that has been started by Starlink, which belongs to Elon Musk. And the kind of visionary that he is, he wants to connect the entire planet and also let people who are available in remote areas who don't have cell connectivity be able to communicate and serve the internet like we normally do. Now the beauty of this technology is that it uses satellites, Starlink satellites to connect your regular smartphone to make calls, texts and even serve the internet and you can do this sitting anywhere on the planet. Just make sure that you can see the sky because that's how the satellite communicates with your phone. Now the real part of this video, what is the most intriguing bit is I'm going to tell you what this tech is, how it works and how is it different from your regular cell service. And also, I want you to understand that there is a role that existing cell services play in the working of this technology. I'm going to be telling you all of that and whether this will come to India and when it does, what kind of commotion, what kind of competition is it going to have with existing cellular networks. Everything in this video, this is Cyrus, you're watching Fiber by India Today and this is a video on direct to sell. Let's go. All right, first let's look upon what it is. Now, this is a new connectivity service that has been started by Elon Musk's company Starlink. Now, with this, you can connect with Starlink satellites using just your mobile phones for calling, texting, and uh, even the internet. And you can also use it to connect with IoT devices, which we'll be talking about later in the video. Now, the information about Starlink and its services is available on the Starlink website. Now, there is a business section under which all of the information has been laid down. So you can go and have a look if you want to learn more about the service. Now, the best part is that to use Starlink and direct to sell you do not need to install any kind of additional hardware on your smartphone and your smartphone just requires a basic tech inside it. What is this? I'll tell you. Now, just to run you through how smartphones work, basically they are communicating with each other using radio waves and they also connect with the mobile networks on a specific spectrum. Now, Today's networks like 5G operate on the 26 megahertz to 35 megahertz frequency and they are also compatible with millimeter wave that can go up to 24 gigahertz. That is the kind of frequency that phones work with. Now, along with these radio waves, there is another technology that's working in tandem and it's called LTE, which is basically long-term evolution. Now, this tech is responsible for uh, controlling the internet data transfers that is happening between devices. And this same LTE technology is available on your smartphone and it is also working on those thousands and millions of cell towers that are spread across the globe. Now, to make data transfers work between satellites and smartphones, Starlink has installed this LTE technology into its own low orbit satellites and it is now like having cell towers in space. Now, these low orbit satellites are very different from regular satellites because they are rotating very close to the Earth compared to regular satellites, which is why these are called low orbit satellites. What this basically implies is that cellular network hardware is rotating around the Earth. It's like having cell towers all around the Earth 24-7 for connectivity. And I think it kind of uh, sounds a bit weird when you hear that a cell tower is floating around in space, but in practicality, that's exactly what's happening. Now, it is very important to establish a connection between your smartphone and the satellite and also make sure that both are compatible with LTE technology. Which is why there is another hardware that's used in these satellites and it's called eNodeB. Now, eNodeB act as a base station for LTE networks and basically help satellites communicate with smartphones that have the same tech. So what SpaceX has uh, smartly done is that it has 
put this eNodeB hardware onto its satellite so to ensure that smartphones can understand whatever information that it's sending to the satellites to communicate more efficiently. Without this specific hardware, it will be impossible for a smartphone to understand what kind of data it's sending to the satellite and then it will not be able to forward that data to be processed by cellular networks. So now that a connection has been established between a satellite and a smartphone, it is still not ready for calling or texting. To enable calling or texting, the satellite will need to communicate with a ground station and then that ground station further sends the signal to a network operator and that is entirely how this connection is happening. Now the same way that a smartphone is sending a signal to the satellite, then to the ground station and then to the networks, the network is also connecting to the internet and the main data pool and then sending the information back to the smartphone in the same direction. Now all of this data transfer is happening at lightning speed because to maintain good connectivity, the transfers have to be very quick. Just for your information, this is the speed of the radio waves on which the data is traveling. And this is in kilometers per hour, by the way. And with this kind of speed, it can circumnavigate the entire planet almost seven times in a few seconds, which is just incredible, the kind of speeds that data is being transferred across the planet. So with this speed, just imagine the kind of data transfer that is happening from a smartphone to a satellite and then to a ground station. So it's all happening very quick and improvements are to happen in this technology for faster data speeds because this technology has to evolve in the future as well. So this was a basic understanding of Starlink and direct to sell how the technology operates. However, this is very different from how networks operate on the ground. So uh, let me just tell you how it is different from regular cell networks and uh, what kind of differences you can see in terms of tech. Now I'm sure you've seen these tall communication cell towers on top of buildings, on top of hills, in basically very high regions you see these cell towers. These are basically mobile network towers that are used to connect uh, mobile networks, cell phones with uh, one another. This is basically primary function. However, Starlink works in a different way. The direct to cell technology works on Starlink satellites that are uh, currently, you know, all around the earth right now. Now with cell towers, you have a certain restrictions because they cannot be placed just anywhere. You have to make sure that they are placed in uh, basically elevated areas and also away from the cities where there is not a lot of congestion. And also one of the biggest restrictions of cell towers is that you cannot place them in remote areas because while connectivity is important there, you cannot get the electricity over there, the wiring and all of the other additional maintenance costs is very expensive if you put them in these areas. So just like you cannot put a cell tower in the middle of an ocean, that is the reason that an option like Starlink kind of works perfectly in such a scenario. Now, in terms of coverage of the network, definitely direct to sell offers a better option any day. However, in terms of the technology and the speed, it is still operating at 3G or 4G speeds, which means that latency is going to be an issue and that is why we will not recommend it for gaming or if you're video streaming because that's not the purpose. It's just meant for basic connections. Whereas ground-based networks give you speeds up to 100 Mbps and that you're getting on 5G networks. So yes, in terms of fast speed connectivity, ground networks are better. However, remember that this is a new technology. It's still in its nascent stage and quickly evolving uh, to offer you speeds of up to 5G and maybe in the future we will have such speeds coming from Starlink satellites because remember the website mentions that it is going to be used to connect IoT devices and when it comes to IoT you need high speed connectivity. So yes, definitely direct to sell is going to get faster in the future. And let me tell you one thing that in terms of hardware, you do not need anything extra. You just need your smartphone that has LTE technology inside of it. So you can directly connect with any satellite online. It is so easy, which means that it will be convenient for people to use. But like I said before, it is not just your smartphone and a satellite that will help you connect with different people across the planet or to the internet, you will still require network operators to do that for you. How will that happen? Let me tell you.
Now, let us imagine for a moment that Starlink launches in India with its direct-to-sell service and uh, will it be able to operate in India? No, absolutely not. Now, in order for Starlink to connect with the Indian user base, it will have to establish a connection with the existing user network and their infrastructure in order to have this connection. So, who will provide these uh, connections and the consumer base to Starlink? Exactly, the existing networks like Airtel, Vodafone Idea, BSNL and even Jio. Now these network providers have a huge customer base and Starlink also have these ground stations that need to connect with these network providers for a lot of other purposes apart from just connecting to the main internet network. They also will require these networks with the billing, the infrastructure maintenance and exactly the whole ecosystem needs to run seamlessly and that can only happen with the collaboration of Starlink and these network providers. And you also need to remember that these specific network providers have the rights, have the spectrum to operate in India and Starlink does not have such an authority or the spectrum or the license to operate. So, which is why these networks will have to collaborate or Starlink will have to collaborate with these networks to operate. The only thing that will happen is that in order for you to use these services, you will have to pay an extra premium to maybe a Jio or an Airtel. Just like you apply for an international roaming pack, you will have to buy a pack to use direct to sell if you are collaborating with one of these networks and that will be the premium plan by which you will be able to get access to direct to sell. Now, in 2022, Starlink uh, had established a partnership with T-Mobile in the US to run direct-to-sell services and in 2024, some of these services were made available to consumers and uh, these users were able to use direct-to-sell in their own uh, region. Now, the company has said that it is partnering with countries like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Switzerland, Chile, and even Peru, where they will be collaborating with local operators to launch their services in the coming days. However, the big question here is, will the service be launched in India? And even if it is launched in India, will it be easy for it to operate? Because there are other competing brands also wanting to uh, you know, take uh, control of the spot. Not easy. Now, India has very strict data localization laws and Starlink has also been advised that if you're launching this service in the country, you'd have to make sure that customer data does not leave the country, which is, I say, quintessential if you're launching a service in India. Now, Starlink satellite-based internet service is kind of getting positive signs of launching in India very soon, which could push Elon Musk to also introduce the direct-to-sell service in India as well. And I think customers would love this option to come here. Because if Starlink is successfully launched in India, I am sure that existing networks like Jio, Airtel, which are also looking to launch their own satellite services will not make it easy for Starlink in India. And Elon Musk, as we know, does not have a telecom operator in India, does not own any company, which is why it will have to make sure that Starlink has to collaborate with existing network operators. But who will give that kind of an option to Elon Musk? The only option I see here is that it could collaborate with a Vodafone idea or maybe even a BSNL to launch its services in India because Jio and Airtel, who already have their own satellite services coming soon, might want to also venture into the direct-to-sell service for customers because if they have the tech, why would they want competition to come and take a larger piece of the pie? They won't want that. All right, so this was a quick video on Starlink's direct to sell technology and service. And I am sure that global texting and calling is going to become much more easier when this service is launched globally. And even you'll be able to access the internet without having to connect with cell networks. And I know that this tech is relatively new and you would be having questions around it. So please feel free to go into the comment section and write your questions on. I'll try my best to answer all of these questions that we have posted because yes, Yes, it is a complicated technology and I'll try my best to break it down for you. That's it for this video. Hope you found it informational. Do share it with everyone who you feel will gain some knowledge and information from content like this. And please support our channel, subscribe to us and keep following Fiverr for more such videos. This is Cyrus signing off. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.